Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black heart is sign and black and again asking you to hit that share button. Uh, thank you if you have hit like or subscribe, but sharing is where we all benefit. Um, this message is regarding one of the most common misconceptions in any manosphere, black or white. Um, I have hit the like button on videos talking about alpha and beta, um, Black Ram 313 and Steph is cold. Steph and the Kling Scales have put out some excellent videos explaining uh, what men need to know. But that's not all. Um, you see, when they've explained what men need to know, it's based, again, on women's perceptions because these women's perceptions are also going to determine how these women are going to behave. However, we Westerners in general have made this terrible mistake of misunderstanding and taking too seriously the terms alpha and beta in the first doggone place. The first thing is this, a man named Schenkel uh, was the one who performed the studies on wolves. Uh, Schenkel initially said, yes, you've got this uh, dominant male in the group. Schenkel told the people about this in his findings and then um, they took it and ran with it. He tried to duplicate his research later on, 20 years later, and he could not. He found that this dominant male was the father and that his mate was the mother and that these were not a dominant male and female. They were just running, uh, dominating, unrelated other males and females, but what he found was that they were in fact actually raising their pups. Their dominance had to do with age and uh, paternity and maternity and not to do with strictly size or strength. When the cubs were simply too old and too horny to take a subordinate role, they moved out as adults and found their own mates and started their own families, and these packs became families. Now I understand how it is that wolves can communicate so well without a spoken language as we know it. So, in the 40s he did this study. Somewhere down the line, about in the 20s, he realized uh, what he was seeing, and he went and tried to get his own previous books off the shelves, and he tried to explain this to people, to his people, not just his white people, but his followers, his listeners, and they couldn't, they would not listen. So, um, this ran, this took on a life of its own. And a man named Metch also did the same thing. A man studied wolves, and his name is L. David Metch. And he was responsible as well for the, uh, the popular idea of an alpha wolf. He even released a book. He later has tried to explain, um, yeah, he later has tried to explain what he found, that this was not the case. And even Schenkel's ideas actually came about from studying wolves in captivity, where they competed because the, the environment was artificial in the first place. But in the wild, it's as I said it. The only male, adult male, is the father. The only adult female is the mother. The other males are his own sons anyway. And then you've got these werewolf movies that are very entertaining and scary, but they reinforce this notion. And then, of course, as I've mentioned, Metch came out and realized he came to the same conclusion and reacted the same way, tried to bring forth the new information. Now we here today are banging on this old, outdated, and disproven information and arguing about it. And we're giving validity to, um, as Don Calypso would put it, a seriously way off decalibrated vaginal positioning system that affects the Western women. And we're using these terms to justify it. Now granted, I do understand that there are men that are just unattractive. I understand that sometimes I'm that dude and sometimes I'm not. But see, that's what's realistic about it. 
Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. Other men, you would think the same thing. I understand that there are guys who are just unattractive for various reasons. They don't even go outside. They look like they're in bad shape. They smell terrible because they're not grooming. They're spending all their time uh, with no sunlight and uh, playing video games in somebody's basement. I get that there are these guys, but we're walking around here nowadays talking as though um, only, only the strongest men are alpha and, and normal men are just betas, which in fact would have been referred to as omegas, not betas, by these men that did the studies and made the mistakes and corrected them. A similar thing has affected black people before, a similar pattern. We get a little bit of information and we run with it and we don't check the history. This is what makes BGS Ibmore's channel so important. He comes with the history. See, let's take Rastafarianism for as an example. It has affected black culture in areas where people aren't even Rastafarians. Rastafarianism has affected even Muslims in Africa in good ways and in bad ways, but it has affected them. Now let's, take at the, let, let's look at the roots of it. Marcus Garvey made a prediction like I did, like I made a few predictions in my last video. Marcus Garvey said, look to the east for the crowning of a black king and he would be your redemption. Shortly after this, Haile Selassie, he was actually Raz Tafari Makonan, uh, and Raz means literally head in their language, but as a title, it meant a duke. And he was a duke of the Shewa province, if I'm not mistaken, which is where the capital of Ethiopia is. And then he became, of course, uh, when Empress uh, Zauditu passed away, he was crowned the emperor. It seemed to fit his prediction. Number one, there's no proof Garvey said that. Number two, there is proof that Garvey said Haile Selassie was nothing special after Selassie was coronated, crowned king. Then the Italians attacked and tried to colonize, and Selassie, number one, left uh, Ethiopia to go to uh, England to secure allies. But part of the time, he was actually just there. And he did go back and fight, but in the beginning, Garvey said, this man is a coward. He fled the country. And not only that, but when he first went to uh, England, Selassie did not meet with Garvey's black delegation, but he met with a white delegation. And Selassie actually referred to himself as a Caucasian. And Selassie was not really hard up against the slave trade like he needed to be. And Garvey called him on it and checked him on this. To this day, we don't know about this, but we know about a prediction he's rumored to have made that Selassie was rumored to have fit, despite the fact that there is proof, Garvey said, Selassie is nothing special. Now, I know y'all pronounce it Selassie I. That's Selassie number one. But in actuality, Selassie is the, the um, hard pronunciation. So that's why I'm saying it this way. Likewise, we know that Garvey and W.E.B. Du Bois were beefing. We know about this. We don't know that they actually reconciled later and that also W.E.B. Du Bois came around and said Garvey was right. He became a Pan-Africanist, went back to the motherland, specifically Ghana, where he's buried to this day because he passed away there. We don't know about that. We always know a little bit, but not enough to actually do uh, uh, or make intelligent decisions, well-informed decisions, and what makes matters worse is that we run and do a hell of a lot with false information and nothing with true information, or not enough. So to use the terms alpha and beta, as long as you are making it clear that you are quoting the women's understanding, it's understandable because this is their understanding. If you quote it, you quote it in the terms in which they grasp the concept. But to use it as though these are valid terms and categories for us is not valid because number one, every man is um, a beta in some categories and every man is a, a, an omega in other categories, completely inferior. It depends on what is the arena. And also, more so than that, every man is alpha in something. Or almost every man is alpha in something. And more so than that, we men are complex. We aren't wolves. And wolves are not simple. They're not as uh, simple as we might think. They're more complex than we think. 
we have more personalities actually um, than they do. And not only that, there's something else at play. If women are going to categorize men in only two categories and maybe three if we're lucky, the fact remains that we deserve to do this to them more so because they're taking us as different as we are from each other and saying, yeah, the alpha or your beta. Maybe some third category if we're lucky when in fact, when it comes to how they regard us, they only fall in two or three categories. Not all their personalities, but I'm talking about how they're going to react to us where we are concerned there ain't but two or three types, especially in the West. And what are these two or three types? I'll give you a hint. Number one, it should be um, in an ideal world, it is immoral for me to judge and form expectations of a woman based on her looks. Number two, in an ideal world, in an ideal world, it should be impossible for me to make these judgments and be accurate. Number three, in the real world as it is today, there is actually no better uh, measuring stick by which to predict a woman's behavior towards me and towards other men than how she looks. Now, she may have a different personality from all these other women, but all of them are going to have one thing in common. Either they are attractive and they, uh, they simply don't even see us as normal men, like not even in the middle or they're unattractive and they're willing to give us a shot. That's it. There's nothing else. Either they are attractive and they are terrible judges. They are very harsh judges. It's beyond having options. They are terribly demanding or they're unattractive. And if they know they're unattractive, they'll give us a shot. They'll take what comes along. They don't want me to tell you this, but when I do say this, they'll say, well, what's so different I mean, what, what's so surprising about that? The only thing is, is like I said, they don't want you to make these predictions. They don't want you to make these judgments and simplify it like that. But they turn around and they want to do this with us. So we can sit up and use the terms alpha and omega when you're talking about their perceptions. But we should not be using this like these are really seriously terms. You see, in real life, what they refer to as the beta is simply the man that is interested in women because he's heterosexual, but he does not know the games they play. That alone is enough to make a man uh, what they call beta, which actually would be an omega. If these terms were right in the way that they describe wolves, which they're not. No, a beta is nothing worse than that. The Omega might be um, the guy that sits in the basement playing video games, eating corn chips and not bathing and all this other stuff. And then going to incel chat rooms and venting and moaning about how miserable he is because they look so hot, but they won't give him the time of day. Those might be Omegas if these terms were correct. But you know what? The problem is that if you are a regular normal guy, they call you beta, but what they mean is omega. It's all the same. So they're taking multiple types of men and putting them in two categories. Like I say, three if you're lucky. When in fact, they come in pretty much two categories. I would say maybe three. The third one is the one that does not really know how she looks. She's either attractive and thinks she's not, or she's not attractive and she thinks she is. You could maybe count them as a third with regard to how they're going to treat you as a man. Now, that doesn't mean they all like the same favorite colors and they got the same favorite flowers and they like the same movies. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when it comes to how they're going to treat you, they all of a sudden become very one dimensional or two dimensional. But you're supposed to be alpha, bro. The alpha is simply the man they want to screw, usually because enough other women they know also want to screw the same man. He may know the games they play or he may not know the games they play because they don't play these games on him, whatever the case is. What about the Sigma? Well, the Sigma is the man that knows the games these women play. When he knows the games that these women play, he says, I'm not going to be that target. I may like them. Notice women do not refer to gay men as anything. They don't assign Greek alphabet letters to gay men or even to bisexual men for that matter. Understand that. The sigma is 
still hetero, but he has to defend himself because he knows what's going on. He's not pursuing them and they're not pursuing him. They don't know what to make of him, but you know what they're going to say. He's a beta like the rest of them. What they really mean is omega. So these terms, we are stupid for uh, repeating often. If we're giving credence to them beyond simply explaining the ways uh, or explaining the perception of women. When you go abroad, men have different personalities. But even men that act aggressive or assertive about one thing don't act this way about something else. One of the things I saw was that um, in Malaysia, there is a martial art called Silat. And I don't, um, I don't know the martial art, I just know that it exists. And that's great. But one of the things I understand, and I learned this from my buddy, was that sometimes you get a few Westerners that go over there, usually white Westerners, sometimes black, but you get a few people that go over there and they come from really highly abrasive and loudmouth cultures, including Nigerians. And that what the Malaysians like to do, mostly the Malay people like to do, is let them show how they are. Then surprise them later. Either they isolate such people and simply won't spend any time with them, or they may decide just for entertainment's sake to go ahead and surprise such a person with a show of force, telling him, hey, you're too loud, shut up. Ain't nobody in here screaming but you. Now that's something there. Why is that? Because the Malay are very laid back and calm. In the West, they would be referred to as beta males but they got a lot of babies. Obviously, them women don't understand, they don't have that same uh, ranking system. Either she likes him or she doesn't, and that's perfectly okay. Either she likes that guy or she doesn't, and that's perfectly okay. Do they prefer that a man have a lot of money? Yeah, they do prefer it. They also have to understand that that's not a realistic expectation for most of the population. And there are women who, uh, they're, they're referred to as uh, um, handbag chasers. They're women that only want to date or marry wealthy men so that they can acquire trinkets to show off to other women. These women are easily identifiable and they're considered to be stupid because everybody knows that you can identify such women. They don't hide themselves very well. So they're considered dumb as hell and it is understood by other women and, and all men that these women are going to be relocated uh, relegated to concubine status when they get older, someone's girlfriend, or maybe a second wife, and probably not even that. It, this is understood. She can act like this, they're those who choose, but there's no reward. They are not normal, but do you go into the West and they're normal? But these, ab they're considered normal, but these abnormal women, because of the abnormal socialization of these Western nations, um, still have the audacity to turn around and try to categorize men as so-called alphas and betas like we're animals and then take men that are in the middle anywhere in the middle and put them in the beta category which they did not even so much as name correctly in the first place which would have been omega if you really want to talk about inferior men and uh, in another recording I'm going to talk about um the defense of the so-called Omega men, the ones that really are unattractive. Now, I'm talking about like the one the stereotypical incel, sitting in their basement playing video games, and even though a lot of those guys aren't really us, um, they're all white, I'm still, going, what I'm doing is I'm going to offer a defense for the men who just, who multiple women just don't like, they find repulsive. I'll explain more in that video. You see, I don't have to be in a category to defend them when they're attacked for something that they did not do. So anyway, more to come on that later. In the meantime, I've hoped that I've been able to benefit you by explaining the misuse and the misunderstandings that we have of alpha and beta uh, and how this fits into a, a pattern that we black folks have uh, manifested multiple times throughout history. 
If we would read, we hate to do that, but if we would read, which is actually more important than listening to these videos, we'd learn so much. I hope that what I've said is a benefit. I hope that one day it's not true anymore. Um, thank you for listening. Blackheart, sign, blackout, assalamu alaikum, and black male power.